السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ yesterday we talked about a few hypothetical cases which could reset humans back to the stone age or at least closer to the stone age and could uh, affect the entire supply chain one of them uh, was something related to a cyber terrorism or a cyber attack so massive in nature that the entire humanity gets affected so i ask you would you be interested in me telling you a little bit more about this as to what are the different kinds of attacks that could happen in the digital world and some of you showed interest in that uh, we can uh, start our today's lecture with an ayah from the holy quran which is from surah al-a'raf ayah number 56 in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala tufsidu fil ardi ba'da islahiha do not cause an unrest or fasad on the faith of face of earth after it has come to a point where there is peace everywhere so it is very important for individuals to maintain the peace and cyber terrorism and cyber attacks are against the peace of the world and uh, we can look into it in much greater detail if you are interested in me telling you under what circumstances and at to what extent these kind of things can happen between the governments but at no point in time according to the islamic rulings it should affect the life of individuals who are um uh, citizens and if you're interested we can look into those details as well but today our focus is on software attacks uh, which attack in the modern days the computers and affect or um, disable a person's life one of those very commonly understood attack is called a virus attack which is where a small piece of code that can affect a computer or nodes on a network and could cause dis- disruption in day-to-day activities something that we have been hearing for a very long time however there is something called a polymorphic virus a polymorphic virus is an intelligent virus which can mutate change itself hide itself from antiviruses uh, to find it so it is something that it can modify it becomes extremely dangerous in that way then we have something called worm a worm is a segment of code like a virus however it is um, capable of replicating itself once it gets on the network it can start spreading itself on the other computers so it can replicate it can spread by itself no human intervention is needed similarly we have something called a phishing attack with a ph phishing attack is where um, some kind of an approach through an electronic medium is taken where you are compelled to give your personal information out and then you open yourself or an organization for vulnerabilities so it is an attack in this particular case somebody use um, fake information that they are representing someone when they are indeed not representing them just to get a hold of your information then we have spear spear phishing attack uh, which targets a larger group of people in the same attack similarly we have a whaling attack w h a l i n g whaling attack where you're looking for bigger fishes in an organization like the higher management and you're directly attacking the higher or upper management of an organization or these are the people of greater value that's what's called whaling uh, attack similarly we have smishing attack which is an attack over a voice so you could probably on the other side of a, a voice over ip um phone people call try to get information out of people and sim- similarly we have a wishing attack which is carried over a mobile text message like recently in this uh, city of chicago people have been getting this text messages from ipass which is used for um in the tolls that you're behind your payment and click this link to pay and some people fell for that Uh, it was a it was a wishing attack similarly there are other kinds of attacks such as a denial of service attack where an attacker sends so many messages to a server machine that the server gets bottlenecked and it cannot serve any more individuals as a result start denying services to the people who really truly need it similarly we have a distributed denial of service attack where an attacker uh, infects so many computers and uh, create zombies or bots that those computers on the behalf of attacker attack and create a bottleneck something that happened back in 2007 or 9 i don't remember the exact year in estonia done by the russian hackers as there were botnet attacks that were happening in estonia um which is um very close to uh, the scandinavian countries which was estonia was once part of the ussr 
a separate country now. Um, so it was attacked by the Russian hackers or attackers, and the entire co- country was brought on its needs. It had to literally cut itself out from the rest of the world to fix the problem. Um, similarly, we have something called a Trojan horse, which is a software program that hides in other computer programs and then um, reveals itself on certain time. Similarly, we have backdoor or a trapdoor, which is credentials which attacker uses that only the attacker has access to, to get into the network and exploit the resources. Similarly, we have one more thing called a logic bomb, which is a segment of computer code that is embedded within an organization's existing computer programs and is designed to activate and perform a destructive action at a certain date or a certain time. These are some of the attacks. Now, one of the devastating attacks that can happen is on the SCADA, um, the supervisory control and data acquisition systems. These are the systems that have several sensors and they are gra- grabbing the real-time data, processing it. Um, so these used to monitor um, very high-end facilities. It could be your uh, water supply facility, your um, electricity facility, or power generation. Could also be used in nuclear plants. So very high-end stuff. And companies um, try to protect it to the best of their capabilities. However, the attacks can happen on these devices. Like back in uh, April of 2022, Russian hackers targeted the Ukrainian power grid and attempted to cause a blackout, which could have potentially affected 2 million people, but the attack was not successful. Similarly, um, in October of 2021, a water treatment plant in the city of Oldsmar in Florida, uh, one of the workers who was monitoring um, the chemicals that are used for the purification of the water so that the tap water becomes drinkable, um, so he noticed that the levels of sodium hydroxide, also known as the caustic soda, all of a sudden his mouse was moving on its own and it needs to maintain itself of 100 parts per million and was changed to 11,100 parts per million. And that could be extremely dangerous for, for humans. It's not that the water doesn't stay at a human consumption level. Uh, so this person got a hold of the mouse right away and fixed it. So... Um, similarly, other types of uh, scat attacks have happened in the past. Uh, for example, a drone attack which was supposed to happen in Pennsylvania power substation and this person sent in this drone uh, and it tied it up with ropes so that it just goes unnoticed. However, it was caught and uh, that was another attack that happened. So these kind of smaller attacks and then we have attacks that can certainly affect an entire country. So these kind of malicious attacks, these are all part of the cyber terrorism or cyber warfare can literally bring countries to knees. Now, probably one of the most well-known SCADA or ICS assault in the history is the hack that targeted the Siemens PLC controllers that were installed in Iran's um, nuclear plant and uh, in fact the nuclear enrichment complex and this was Stuxnet that was developed by US National Security Agency with the goal of stalling Iran's nuclear development and um, what it did was it entered the system and through the Microsoft operating system Windows operating system and then overwrote the logic to, uh, of the uranium centrifuge PLCs rendering them incapable of accurately enriching the uranium at the desired concentration. So, I mean, like, that was a massive, massive attack. I mean, things of that nature that then, if it, if it gets out of control and it gets to a point where it's really, really start affecting people at a level where it should not, then it could be catastrophic. It could be global. It could cause um, humanity to shrink at a rate to a rate uh, and that'll be like beyond beyond coming back kind of a deal so these kind of attacks can really really be um, something that could set back be a setback for a human race back to stone age or somewhere close enough uh, because if the entire supply chain model gets affected now people are like well we'll not lose information we'll not lose information for a few generations maybe but we'll not have resources to pull that information to a level that we would want that information to go. Now think about it, if all your digital devices are fried, uh, where will you get access to the information? 
how many of you have access to physical books up to date not old stuff and being able to put them to practice you would need a lot of stuff that lot of stuff is currently readily available to you because the entire supply chain is in, in motion. But if the entire supply chain goes out of motion and there isn't any enough workforce to run the supply chain, so it's a problem. It is a problem. For example, take, take a simple example of a toy. In order for a piece of toy to be put together, you need certain products, which the toy company doesn't make. It definitely gets it from somewhere. And those guys get their raw material from somewhere and they get it their raw material from somewhere so the somewhere to somewhere to somewhere if anything in the due process gets disrupted the whole supply chain can get disrupted for example during the pandemic covid 19 years we had a shortage of uh, brand new cars in the u.s because there were certain chips that we needed in the cars to be installed and that supply chain for those chips uh is, was a problem because during the COVID years, the companies used to produce those chips. They shifted elsewhere to be in business. And there were a lot of consumer electronics that were being used in the COVID years. And not very many people were buying brand new cars. So the whole market shifted to consumer electronics, smaller gadgets, smaller devices, household commodities. Certain companies went out of business like um, there were certain vacuum cleaning companies that would provide a vacuum cleaner, built-in vacuum cleaner in cars like Honda Odyssey. And the whole company went out of business during COVID years and Honda had to modify its van Odyssey and take out that vacuum cleaner unit because the company that was providing it uh, just, just went bankrupt. And they couldn't find anybody alternate because when they originally designed the vehicle, they had that stuff to go in there. So things of that nature. Now, this was something very small. But think about it. I mean, like we know people whose vehicles that were imported from Europe and were sitting in the American on the American docks for a year or so because it was missing certain chips that are required by the U.S. law. So things of that nature could happen. And if you notice in the pandemic of COVID-19, we didn't have as drastic impact on the death of the human race. Uh, compared to in the past when, for example, uh, if you look at the data of the Black Plague or you look at the data of the other pandemics so that have wiped out people um, and back in those days because of the limited traveling or no traveling whatsoever, the impact was not as great. But now in these times that we are living in, when the world is a global village, it could be drastic. So anyway, I just wanted to share this information with you. If you're interested in me talking about uh, what is Islam's take on this kind of things, um, let me know in the comment section below so that I can tell you in the light of Quran and Hadith that what is Islam stands on these kind of things which are uh, done to disrupt other countries or its citizens or disrupt the lives of the citizens of your own country. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.